So let's start chapter six. Now, in chapter five, we dealt with binomial distributions and we dealt with uh, distributions, probability distributions that just had a discrete random variable, which meant that we could only have a certain number of, of items, a, a finite number of, of values to, that would occur, or a, a fixed number, uh, or, or a countable number. So something that, that wasn't infinite or that you could count. In chapter six, we deal with something different. Chapter 6 now, we're going to study continuous random variables. Those are those ones that could take on an infinite number of possible values. So it wasn't just like rolling a die where you could only get six possible outcomes, or pulling out a card where you only get a fixed number of outcomes. Here, we can study any number of outcomes, an infinite number, so, such as like when you're measuring something. And we've, we've talked about this several times, but if, you, if you're measuring a length, you, you're not just going to measure something that's 11 inches or, or 12 inches or 13 inches. You could be anywhere in that span, right? You can get as precise as what your measuring tool allows. So it doesn't, it's not like you can count measurements. They're not in any particular order. What's the next number after 3.01? You go, well, I don't know. It's not 3.02. You can do 3.01001. That's, that's in between there somewhere, and you can't count that. Uh, so that, that's what we're studying here is a continuous random variable. Firstly, before we actually get on into continuous random variables, I got to tell you that if the continuous random variable has a symmetric bell-shaped curve, do you remember what the symmetric bell-shaped curve was was called when we had something no like this? No distribution. Say it again. No called it normal. That's exactly right. So, if we have a normal distribution or a bell-shaped curve, that's that's really what we're looking for in our, in our chapter six, is, is something that, that's normally distributed. If we don't have a normal distribution, none of this stuff really applies. Uh, so what we need out of this section, out of this chapter, is for our continuous random variable to have a symmetric bell-shaped curve, otherwise known as a normal distribution. Continuous random variable. continuous random variable has a symmetric bell-shaped curve, it's considered to have a normal distribution or be normally distributed. And that's what we're looking to have happen. In section 6.2, what we're going to be looking at is something called the standard normal distribution. Now, I'm going I'm to introduce um, this concept of a distribution with continuous random variables in just a little while. And I'll kind of build from what's called a uniform distribution to a standard normal distribution. So you can kind of see the differences and understand what we're, we're going to be doing. Basically, here's our idea. Remember the whole z-score idea, right? I hope so. If you don't remember the formula for z-score, no problem. I'll give it to you a little bit. But what we're going to be doing is combining the idea of the area under a curve, which if you've had calculus, you know that you can find the area under a curve. Now, this is not calculus-based statistics, but you could do calculus-based statistics. There is such a class, uh, which sounds awesome, right? For those of you who, uh, I don't know how many people, how many people have had calculus in here? Oh, all my, almost all my students. You didn't have the opportunity to take me. I'm sorry for you. Uh, but that's the rest of you, yes, fantastic. If you're interested in calculus, I teach next semester. It's one, isn't it a good class? Just lie. <laughs> anyway, what we're going to be doing is we're going to combine the ideas of area under a curve 
with that of a z-score and probability to tie all this stuff together. That's the goal. The idea of area as being a probability combined with our z-score. <clears throat> and what we need to realize is that the areas ultimately under a curve are going to represent probabilities for us. So we're going to tie those concepts together and be able to figure out probabilities simply from a z-score and the fact that we have a normal distribution. So this is a really big idea for us that we are dealing with a normal distribution. If we don't, if we have a skewed distribution, this, it's not going to happen for us. We need something that's symmetric for this to work. Now, before we get on into a, a normal distribution and a standard normal distribution, which is where we're headed, what we need to talk about first is a uniform distribution, because I want to get the idea of area combined with probability to kind of fit in your head. What's uniform mean, by the way? What now? What's uniform mean? That thing you put on when you go into the military, it's a uniform. Why is it called a uniform? All of them are identical. That's right. Everything would be the same, right? Uniform means the same. So in a uniform distribution, all the outcomes are exactly the same. So if you look at the distribution, it would just have a flat line. It wouldn't go up, it wouldn't go down, it would just be the same <coughs> all the way across. You with me on that? It's the most basic type of distribution that we can have. So all the values would have the same probability of, occur of occurring if we were looking at a <coughs> uniform probability distribution. So all values have the same probability of occurring. Should I give you an example for this uniform distribution? You'll see one. Okay, we'll do an example over here. Let's do this example. This will be a fun one for you. Have you noticed that I typically go over class sometimes? You notice that? By like a 30 seconds to, to like a minute? Maybe two minutes if it's a good day? Not five minutes. Never five minutes. But I usually start like two minutes late, so it, it evens out. Actually, we should leave, if, if you come in late, you should really leave early to make up for it, right? And you should. That makes sense to me in my head. No. Just kidding. Let's say this is the situation this class is about right. That we get out of class anywhere between 50 minutes after we start to 52 minutes. Here's 51, here's 50.5, 51.5. We get in any, out anywhere, we never, we never end before 50 minutes, right? <laughs> ever, 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 ever. So it's, it's always 50 minutes or after. Usually I try to make it right on 50 minutes, but sometimes the stuff is just so important we have to say like two more sentences and that takes two minutes sometimes. But anyway, we, we end somewhere between 50 and 52 minutes and the likelihood that that's going to happen is even across the board. We, sometimes we end at 52 minutes and sometimes we end at 51.50 and sometimes we end in here, right? At 51 point nine seconds and sometimes we end it right at 50 or 50.001 notice that I could give you any time in this range true I could give you any time so you have to duck a little bit lower this time that way the video see let's try do the limbo like that oh I got you got you at the end got you right at the end anyway so at any point on this, this scale, you could give me a time that I could end class, right? Do we end precisely at 50 minutes? Do we end precisely at 50.5 minutes? 50 minutes, 30 seconds? No, we end somewhere in here, usually, or here, or here. Or What we're going to do in this example is say, well, let's pretend that the likelihood of ending at any given time is the same. For, for this two minute range. So we could end anywhere and the, the chances are equally likely that we end at 50 seconds that, uh, or that we end, or, sorry, 50 minutes or 52 minutes or 50 minutes in two seconds. So we're going to say that it's equal all the way across. So it's uniform. The probability of this time occurring is it equal to the probability of this one occurring and this one occurring and this one occurring.
So this is the the end time of our class. Now here's what I'm going to do. With a uniform distribution, or with any distribution, the ultimate goal is you want to make the area under the curve equal to 1. You want to make it equal to 1. And the reason why, I'll tell you in a second, the, we, we want to make it equal to 1 because what we're going to do is associate the area with the probability. Did you know that every probability has to be between 0 and 1? If we make the area equal to 1, then we have a direct correlation between probability and area. 1 to 1. Does that make sense to you? So we're going to try to force this area to equal 1. We're going to force the area to equal 1. What's our width for this interval? So our width is 2, okay. <coughs> width is 2. This is a, a rectangular shape, true? To find a rectangular shape, you take the, the base times the height. So if my width is 2, what do I need this value to be up here in order so I take the base times the height and it gives me 1? 2 times 2 would be 4. 1 times 2 would be 2. 1 half. 1 half. 0.5. Where's the 0.5 coming from? <coughs> 0.5 is coming from I need the I need the area to be one. Doesn't mean that every single probability has 50% chance of occurring, right? You can't even say that because there's an infinite number of values. If everyone had a 50% chance of occurring, add those all together, you're going to get an infinite number times 50%, right? That doesn't even make sense. So this this probability, it's kind of or this, this thing right here, that, that's not really the probability for each value to occur. All we're saying is we have an equal value, or equal probability for each of those outcomes to happen. We're forcing this thing to be a level of 0.5 because we need the area to be 1. That's where the 0.5 is coming from. It's not just a made-up number. Um, it has really nothing to do with the probability for each one of these things. In fact, if you think about this, I, I really do want you to think about this. This actually has a, a calculus concept behind it. What's the probability... Oh shoot, that's supposed to be straight. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta stop drinking vodka before class. <laughs> wow. Just kidding. Just kidding. <laughs> Can you tell me what's the probability of getting exactly this time? Let's say this is 50.452783. What's the probability of getting exactly that time that the class ends on? Exactly that time. What do you think? How many possible values do I have between here and here? Don't tell me four. An infinite number. I'm picking one out of an infinite number. What's one divided by infinity? How much is it? What's one divided by ten? I talked so long, my pen dried up. What's <laughs> 1 divided by 10? So it approaches 0. This is point, point 0.1, yes? Okay, you, you know how to do math, true? Okay. <laughs> What's 1 divided by 100? Point zero 0.01. What's 1 divided by 1,000? Point zero zero 0.001. Are the numbers getting bigger or smaller? Oh. What's 1 divided by infinity? Point zero zero Whatever I stop at, actually it's not even that, it doesn't, it doesn't actually ever 